Well, hello everyone. It's the Pampered Stamper. It's Jackie coming to you from Schravezond in the Netherlands. And it is Monday. So happy Monday to you. And that means it's Cheer Corner Day. And I have a confession to make. I have not yet chosen the person to receive the Cheer Corner card from last week. Okay, so I have to do that today. And so the way I do that is I will go through the nominations. And if, if there's a difficulty choosing one, then I will do it randomly with an app on my phone. But if there's a clear winner in my mind, then uh, I will notify that person and say, um, your person has been chosen to receive the Cheer Corner card this week. And the purpose for my Cheer Corner is really to show everybody and to share with everyone that you can change the world one card at a time. I really believe that Happy Mail is just such a simple way where we can make life better. And you don't need a special occasion to send a card. And if you're going to send a card, it's really nice when you put a little letter inside. Write a note. And it can be just a thinking of you. It can be, I'm proud of you. It can be, I miss you. Um, and it could be recognizing an event in their lives, a birthday, a promotion, a move. Who knows? But really, you don't need a reason to send a card. It's just that the reason is to brighten someone's day. So let's take a look and see what we're making this week. All right, so here are the pieces that you need. I have a four and a quarter by 11 sheet of card stock. And if you have a paper trimmer, that looks like this. This is my paper trimmer. So you can see that it has inches and centimeters. It has a dark blade that cuts and a gray blade that scores. Anyway, you're going to take your four and a quarter by 11 inch piece and we're gonna score it, which means we're gonna put a a folding line at the 3 8 inch mark, 1 and 7 8, 3 and 5 8, 5 and 1 8, and 5 and a half. I've already cut a few of these scalloped circles. I'm not sure which one we're going to use. And then we have a piece of white that is 3 and a quarter inches by 4. And we have a 4 inch by 12 inch piece of pattern paper. And we're going to cut that one. We're going to cut one at 2 inches by 4 inches. We're going to cut two at one and a half by four inches. We're cutting three pieces a quarter inch by four and we're cutting four pieces that are one and a quarter inches by four and that will all come out of this strip. So that's quite handy. So let's do the scoring first. And I will put my sheet there so that I know what I'm doing. My um, piece of cardstock is a little bit battered on the one end but you know what? It'll be okay. So on this side, I'm going to score at 3 eighths of an inch. So it's 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, like so. So then we're going to use the gray blade, so 3 eighths of an inch, and then I'm going to flip it the other way. We're going to 1 and 7 eighths, 3 and 5 eighths, 5 and 1 eighth, and five and a half, which is the halfway mark of the card. And then what we're going to do is we're going to crease the card on all of those lines. So we'll first we'll fold it in half and we'll give it a good, and we'll do a bit of an accordion fold. So we'll go back and forth. Yeah. It's kind of like wrapping a present. The, the crisper your folds, the better. And we have that one still one. And now I'm going to do it the other way as well. And just want to make sure our folds are all good. And now we're good to go. So we've got there and it's going to kind of go like this and it, this is called a bay window fold and I'm going to show you actually the card that I've already made. I was playing this morning and I made this card and see if you go like that it's got that classical bay window shape top. Um, I meant to grab the card that I received from Ina Eisen and you know what I will pause my video and go and grab it because that is the card that inspired me to um, to make this one. It's called a bay window fold card. So it just tucks in like this and then it opens up. And I decorated the back too. 
and then it just tucks in this little fold. You know what? I'll show you the, the INES card at the very end. And in the meantime, we're going to make this. So I'm just going to fold the card open all the way. Oh, yeah. We need to cut our paper first. Okay. So here we go. We're going to cut our pattern paper. We need one piece at two inches by four inches. So I'll do that one first. So that's two inches by four inches. And then I need two at one and a half by four. One and a half. I love this penguin paper. You can find me on Tuesdays. I'm going to be every Tuesday this month. I'm going to be making something with this penguin paper. So I just cut um, two at one and a half by four. Now I'm cutting three at one quarter inch by four. So I'm going to use this side. These are just little skinny strips. One. I think I might have cut that one a smidge crooked. Two. Well, maybe not. And three. Okay, so I have three little strips. I'm going to move those off to the side. And then we need four at one and a quarter by four. So I'm going to do that on this side as well. Four of these. One. And two. And I'll have one little piece left over. Three. And four. This is just great, playful winter paper. Okay, so I have four of those. I have one little piece left over. Okay, I'm not sure what we're going to do with that. So now we're going to put these papers. So two of them, two of those skinny ones, are going to go on the side here. Oh, do I have two pieces there? I do. And I kind of like to see which piece has all the little creatures the way I want. And I like that one there. And I want the bear, I think, on this side. And this middle one, it's going to be covered. Oh, no, see, that one's too small. On that one, I need the, the one and three quarter. No, the one and a half by four. That's this one. This is the one and a half by four. And these are the one and a quarter by four. Okay, and then this is going to go in the middle here. So I think that's okay. Or do I want this one? Let's have a look. Here and here. And his face is just popping up above there. But then, no. You know what? I think I want this one. Okay. So now we're just going to take our adhesive and glue them all on. Okay. Let's start with this. Just a liquid adhesive is fine. What's nice about a liquid adhesive is that you can slide it around so that it's positioned properly. So I just want an even border all around this penguin. Okay. There, that looks pretty good. And so it's amazing what a few little folds, score lines in different places can do. Now, if you send this card away, then on the back, I will write to the person, you know, this is a um, a bay window fold card. So you, when you open it, you need to tuck the one side under because if you don't know, you're not going. You're just going to think it's a weird card that doesn't look so great when it's laying there. So here's another thing that you can talk about when you write this card. There, this is a card making is a great activity to do with your kids. So now I'm going to take this one, and you see these two little tiny strips. I'm going to do this in on this side like that, just so that it's different. And because those pieces are so skinny, I'm going to use a silicone mat, and I'm going to make a little puddle with glue, like so. And then I'm going to take a sponge, and I keep this sponge in a little Ziploc bag. I have a little, these are my glue sponges, and I just keep them in a little Ziploc bag because they get a little gross. So flatten out the glue, and this way, why, why I do this trick is that you don't get glue seeping anywhere. So I'm just going to just sponge that on that little strip. Okay, it gives me just the right amount of adhesive. So I'm going to lay that on here. And I'm going to try to line it up so that the tops are the same. There. So that's that one. And then we're going to do another one on the other side. So I just take my little glue there. Make sure you glue it on the right side. 
there. Oops, don't get glue where you don't want it to go. The sun is coming out. When, you in, when you're in Canada, you don't take the sun for granted. Although, I mean, you do take the sun for granted, unless you live on the west coast, perhaps. But in Holland, every time the sun comes out, it's an adventure. Okay, so I have those pieces. See? And now I'm going to do the inside pieces. You know what I'm going to do first? This piece. No, I won't. I won't. This piece here has to be glued down. Okay, but I'm going to wait with that. I'm going to take my piece of white, and it's going to go right like so. This is the part where you can write your write your card on. I could stamp it first if I wanted to, but I'm not going to because I didn't plan that far ahead. So that piece is going to go right like so with an even border around. So, and now for this piece here, we're going to take that two inch piece that we had and we're going to cut it in half. And the reason we're doing it now is because these two pieces have to lay side by side because you want the picture to match. because They're going to go right up against each other. So here we go. But the second piece, it needs to be popped up because that's going to be the mechanism that um, makes it pop up. Okay, so this one's going to go flat. So we'll put a little adhesive here. There. And it's going to go right up against, it's going to butt right up against the white piece. Make sure your snowmen are going in the right direction. There, so that's going to go on flat. Now this piece is going to pop up because this edge is going to tuck underneath when it's open. Okay, so it stands up. So we're going to turn this over and we're going to grab some dimensionals, which are these things. They pop things up and I'm going to do five of these. So I'm going to do right in the middle. I'm just going to try to line them, space them evenly. One in the middle here, and one in between each side. I'm trying to get the edges. I'm not a dimension. I'm directionally challenged, so I'm trying to get the straight edges to be straight, lined up with the edge of the paper. Okay. So making sure I have all the little backings off. Okay. Now we're good. Now this little piece is going to pop up right beside. See, and then the picture is one. Okay, and now we're going to take our last little pieces and we're going to decorate the inside of the card. So that one's going to go here, here, and you know, we could do this as well if we wanted to, and maybe we will, just so that it's different. Super cute, isn't it? And then that last skinny little strip is going to go here and he's going to get the little snowman buttons on there. So this card is just really cute. It's going to stand up on the mantle. It's going to make somebody smile. So I hope you're thinking about who you can give this card to. Now, I am going to be posting this video on YouTube. And if you're watching it on YouTube, be sure to click that red button on the bottom right corner to subscribe to my channel. When we get to 4,100 subscribers, I'm going to do a draw. You could win the Poinsettias stamp set and dies. So if you have any questions about what I do, about card making, about this hobby, and let me know. Send me a message. Leave a comment on the video or on Facebook. And, um, and if you already make cards and love this hobby, make sure you leave a comment. Um, I love our stamping community. By stamping, I have met people all over the world. And it's so, so cool. I think especially during COVID, it's been really wonderful to have that connection. Okay, so now I'm going to put glue on, on this purple side. But I've used up my whole puddle here, so I'm going to make another one. There. This is actually a really easy card to do. Now you can fancy it up by cutting windows in, in the front, and I'll be doing that next week in a different video. So be sure you subscribe and then you can watch me do that video too. Tomorrow I'm making a really fun fold. A spinning tower card. There. 
how cute is that so now remember I said this piece had to be glued down let me just put some adhesive here and I'm going to put the lid on this I'm just going to fold that down so I just want that to be pressed down it's kind of like a book edge now it's the edge of that see how it just stands up it's quite lovely so now all we need to do is come up with our saying and I really liked this saying I couldn't wait for a special occasion let's see yeah let me look there we go I couldn't wait for a special occasion you know just send a card and that saying comes from this set which you can get for free right now that's another story isn't it um, where would I be without a friend like you I kind of like that too um, Thanks for brightening up my day. Just a card to say you're amazing. Hang in there. Yeah. Lots of different choices. Um, maybe I'll do the same thing that I did already. So I've got the saying, and I'm going to use oops, this gadget called the Stamparatus. It is a stamp positioning tool. So it has a clear hinged plate. And now I need to find my piece of white cardstock. I had an extra piece of white, which has seemingly disappeared. Oh, oh, I found it. I found it here. Look, it has ink on it for my inky fingers, so I'll turn that around. Hold it with the magnet. And then I'm going to lay it down on my cardstock. And then I have these layering circles dies. See, and I'm going to use this one to cut it. So I want to make sure that I have enough room, and I do. On that corner, I have enough room. So I'll hold on to that. And then these are the, the um, scallop circles that I used to cut the other ones with. Okay, so I'm now close the hinge, give it a little press, and then make sure you tuck your paper tight into the corner again. I'm going to use um, Misty Moonlight ink because it coordinates with the cardstock that I'm using. So we just do a gentle tap tap there and give it a good press. And actually that looks great. I don't need to um, I don't need to do that again. It's dark enough. So I'm just gonna put it in my die cutting machine like so, crank it through, and then it'll cut out a circle. And maybe I should show you how to do that. Okay, so I have my machine sitting under here. You really can't see much except for that platform. But I'm going to lay that on. And then, just a minute. Like so. Then I have another plate that's going to go on top. I'm just going to put that in. And it should really be lined up perfectly, but it's not. That's okay. And I'm just going to crank it through. It's kind of like a wash, an old-fashioned washing machine from the turn of the century, the last century. Although I'm dating myself, my mother still had one. See, so now I move that and take a peek. There it is. So that's perfect. You could also use a circle punch if you had one. I'm just gonna move that out of the way. Then we could double layer this. I thought that might be fun. So I have this, this is the same card as the color as the card base. And then look, how cute is that? So we're stepping it up a notch, a little adhesive. nice thing about circles is that you can put them on any which way and it's good. And a little bit more. These colors are really cute together. So. Like that. And now we're going to, this has to go here. And I'm going to put it up a little higher so that we can see that cute penguin and I also want to pop it up so that there's a little bit of dimension so and since you see how this is this piece is wider than that center panel because of that I'm going to just put them straight on here so I'm just gonna go one and two two of these will do it here take the little backings off and then I'm just going to place it so I can see the penguin 
And then the last thing I want to do is, I, I love this paper, I mean this ribbon, and it coordinates exactly with the scarf that the polar bear is wearing. So I'm going to make a little bow. So make a loop, go around the loop, keep all your pieces flat. This is really soft ribbon. And make sure when you see the video on YouTube, click on the show more. It's in small letters. It says show more. Just making this bow as small as I can. And then you can get all the details about this card and everything I use to make it. And maybe there's a little story behind it. Now I'm going to trim that down. Cut it at an angle. You can also fray your ribbon a little bit. And I did that with the other card. It looks a little bit like the ends of a scarf then. That's really cool too. So now I'm just going to put that on with a glue dot. So this is a fantastic product, these little glue dots. They're super strong and they hold things in place. So just always keep the last one covered up. So you can, I don't know if you can see that. It's a little dot on there. The light isn't, there we go. You can kind of see it there. So I'm just going to push that on, pull it off. Did it stay? It did. Okay, and then I'm just going to push this on right here, and now I have my little bow. How cute is that? There. And now, on the back, you can write down, you can put white here if you want, but on the back you can tell them that they have to tuck it in like so, and then it stands up. How cute is that? Perfect, isn't it? Oops. See? It's a fun card. And so you can write your little story in the inside. Dear so-and-so, um, you were nominated by someone who watches my cheer corner on Facebook. And so now you are getting happy mail. Isn't that great? Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Which one do you like better? Do you like the one with the extra layer and with the bow on top? Or do you like the one with the bow on the bottom and without the extra layer? You notice how both of these are the same size, but the one without the extra layer looks bigger. Interesting, isn't it? All right, well, thanks a lot for joining me. Be sure to nominate who you want this card to go to, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. All right, have a super day, guys. Bye.